Okay, again, here we are at part two, right? So in the Guns of August, war begins in August 1914, following the assassination of Francis Ferdinand by Serbian terrorists of the Black Hand within his own country of Austria-Hungary, uh, city of Sarajevo. His nation, Austria-Hungary, issued an ultimatum against Serbia uh, to stop its nationalist activity and essentially to allow the Austrian officials to investigate within Serbia. Serbia declined uh, and Austria declared war on Serbia. Uh, Serbia will be defended by Russia. Russia did not want to see Serbia fall to the Austro-Hungarians. Russia wanted its own influence within the Balkans and also had a cultural affinity sharing language, religion, and ethnicity uh, with the people of Serbia. So Russia begins to mobilize for war, realizing that it cannot mobilize only against Austria-Hungary but also against Germany. So here comes rather you know, large and slow lumbering Russia not heavily industrialized, but very proud nation, uh, toward Germany. And I'm going to imagine this, right? This didn't necessarily happen. But the German Kaiser knows the Russians are getting ready for war. It's no way to keep that a secret. And he asks his high, high command, what should we do? And the generals come in and say, well, sir, to protect ourselves from Russian invasion, we need to attack France. And yes, what do you mean, to attack France when the Russians are coming? Well, uh, the Russians will take a long time to get ready and to move that large army across that vast space to get here. We should attack France. It's a greater enemy. It's an ally to Russia. It will join the war if Russia attacks. So let's knock out the French first. After all, we did that back in 1871. It will be easy, um, especially if we go through neutral Belgium. We can knock out the French, get on high moving, high moving, fast moving trains, uh, and then fight the Russians. So we're not faced with a two front war. And the German uh, Kaiser gives his approval. And uh, the Germans, therefore, proceeded to invade Belgium. The Belgians will fight. The Belgian government says, we are a nation, not a highway. The Belgians fought. The French rushed toward the front. And the British entered the war to defend Belgian neutrality. So here, the great powers of Europe being pulled into the struggle. The German advance is slowed. In fact, uh, in northeastern France, we'll have what we call the Western Front. I know that sounds confusing, but imagine if you're standing in Germany, that it's the Western Front will become a stalemate of trench warfare. Both sides will dig in. Imagine six feet trenches that fill with mud and water and vermin and rats and sadly dead, dead comrades. Uh, very nasty business. And bet it, between these trench lines, nothing can live. The entire forest are blasted away. It's filled with barbed wire and artillery shells and machine gun uh, and, and high-powered rifles uh, fire. But every once in a while, nonetheless, your commander blows a whistle and you have to clamber out of your trench and run toward the other line and try not to get mowed down. So tens of thousands of men will die in single battles without almost any territory changing hands. It's very, very awful business that, from the standpoint of 2021, no one on earth remembers anymore, right? We've forgotten this, um, unfortunately, because uh, you know, we're faced with, with uh, crises all the time and we forget the past. Um, so Britain enters, Italy decides it has a better chance of gaining territory in the Balkans if it joins the Allies, so it joins with Britain and France. The Ottomans uh, put their chances with Germany and Austria-Hungary, uh, and here we go. All of Europe almost is at war, not Spain, actually, but, but much of Europe is at war. The United States neutral in 1914. In fact, President Woodrow Wilson will run on the, the slogan, he kept us out of war, when he runs for re-election and, and wins. 1916. The war quickly became mutual butchery, their initial optimism on all sides. Uh, everyone thinks God is on their side, and the young men go off and kiss by the young women, and you know, it's, it's we're going to be home by Christmas. They won't be, okay? This is August of 1914. The war will not conclude until November of 1918. It became a stalemate. Two most evenly side forces faced off against one another, this nasty business of Trench warfare on the Western Front. New weaponry is invented. Uh, poison gas by the Germans to burn out your lungs and the, the mucous membranes of your eyes. Um, Canadian troops were hit with that first and didn't know what hit them. Gas masks are then developed. The British develop a tank to supposedly to run over the German trenches. So both sides uh, create uh, new weapons of war. In the Eastern Front, the lines were more fluid. Russians finally mobilized, moved toward Germany, but were quickly repulsed deep, deep, deep into Russian territory. It's perhaps a bit of an anecdote, but illustrative nonetheless. 
that Russian troops, poor Russian peasants, uh, illiterate, you know, uneducated, but brave, uh, and fairly, fairly stoic, I imagine, Russian soldiers are sent to the front lines without adequate weaponry, maybe without even a rifle, and they're told to pick one up on the way because you're going to come across a dead comrade. So they lose over a million troops in 1915 alone. That society is cracking. Okay? Um, civilians are targeted in the other nations, especially Germany. There's a blockade. Uh, how are you going to get supplies into Germany from the Atlantic, right? The Germans want to buy American goods, food and materiel, like food and war goods. But how could Americans get, you can't fly into Germany this time. No one's yet crossed the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, Lindbergh won't do it until 1927. So, you know, before 1914, we got, you know, we got uh, 13 years until that's even attempted. And that's with, uh, without any cargo, right, in one seat. So everything has to go in by boat uh, through the North Sea, but the British put their navy essentially here, bottling up the German navy, or at least most of it, the, the, the surface vessels, and the British effectively stopped trade from going into to, uh, to Germany. And that angered some Americans, but there were a lot of German Americans, by the way. Um, the Germans wanted to buy our stuff, but the British and the French are going to buy it, right? So you can get stuff to La Havre, or Bristol, some of these other you know, British or French cities. Uh, what did the Germans do? They try a counter blockade. They can't get their surface vessels, their ships up, but they put kind of around here their Untersee boots, the underwater boats, their submarines, which by this time, 1915, 16, 17, was a fairly effective weapon as long as it didn't surface. If it came up, it would be shot out of the water, very thin hulled, thin skinned vessels. But underwater, they could shoot torpedoes, right? Underwater missiles in sync. Um, you know, marine, uh, military vessels, or merchant marine, okay? uh, And that will, in fact, be happening in, through the f very late 1914 into 1915. Okay? So it becomes a total war, a war in which entire s populations are involved. War of attrition, which society is going to crack first? Um, Germany begins to ration uh, food qu quite early because there's a lack of food coming in. And to conscript or draft, it's very young, very, very young men and older men as well. Okay? People are drafted into factory work. In Britain, that will happen as well. Um, but probably most severe initially in Germany. All governments limit freedoms. Eventually, even the United States will limit uh, the right to free speech. Uh, they'll begin to plan economies. Less so in the United States because the U.S. enters late. But all nations will use propaganda and censorship. So, for example, Eugene Debs, and a perennial democratic socialist candidate for the presidency will be arrested for speaking out against the draft. Why should you, American worker, be drafted to fight against the German worker? It's all workers should be united against the capitalists, right? Be sent to prison for that for, for a number of years. Uh, and many other people as well. And I suppose that's your, your lucky fate is to be sent to prison. Probably unlucky uh, would be be drafted and sent to the front lines in battle, right? Conflict in East Asia as well. Colonials will be drafted, so British subjects in India, big India, uh, French subjects in Vietnam or Indochina will be drafted into the French and British armies, often as porters, often as like, hey, here's a box of ammunition, run it out to the front lines. Okay? Um, you know, the, the French and the, excuse me, the, well, the French uh, colonials and the, the British colonials have been hearing for so, you know, how great Europe was, well, here's your chance to go to Europe, and it's just hell on earth. Imagine what those men felt if they survived and made it back home to Africa, India, or Southeast Asia. Right? They would probably no longer want to be part of the metropole or the mother country. Japan uh, will enter the war against Germany, which most people don't remember or don't know, uh, to pick up uh, German islands in the South Pacific, essentially, places like Guam, um, German uh, Samoa. Guam is the United States, but German Samoa. Um, Yes, and they also take advantage of the European preoccupation with conflict in Europe to make demands on China, right? So if the Europeans are busy in Europe, essentially, during this war, Japan is going to put demands on China okay, to try to control more and more of China, especially in northern China. Battles will take place in Africa and also the so-called Middle East or South uh, West Asia. Uh, German colonies in Africa are overrun by the British and the French. The Ottoman Empire, a major player in this war, a major power in this war, um, it's, it's
it's, it's empire stretched into the Middle East, right? Uh, a British-led, British-planned Australian invasion, attempted, excuse me, attempted invasion of the Ottoman Empire was uh, focused on Gallipoli. This was a disaster for Australian troops, something the Australians have not yet forgotten. Um, awful, awful uh, scenes of Australian troops trying to clamber ashore in Gallipoli. Um, look, this was not yet the era of amphibious warfare. We can get out of a boat, run on the beach, and take the land. Um, the Armenian people, uh, not seen as loyal by the multi-ethnic Ottoman Empire, were targeted essentially for genocide. Uh, imagine people being told to get up and start walking, and the walk doesn't end until everyone's dead. I can oversimplify a horrific, horrific event in world history, uh, killing over a million Armenians. Something the Turkish government today, by the way, still denies. Sorry. There's historical evidence that this did happen. The Ottomans will uh, suffer defeat after 1915. The British will achieve victories in the Middle East with their Arab allies. So the British will t say to the Arab people, why are you living under Ottoman rule? Join with us. You'll have your independence. You know, the Ottomans don't treat you well. They're Turkish, you're Arab, etc. And uh, people like Lawrence of Arabia were successful in gaining Arab allies to fight against the Ottomans. And they're successful, but of course, the Arabs aren't going to get their own countries right away. At the close of the war, the British and the French divide up the Middle East, taken from the Ottomans, but divided up amongst themselves as mandates, which were basically colonies of the British and French. More about that next time. Um, so this was the Arab revolt. The end of the war. Russia will be the first society to crack. It will experience two revolutions in 1917. In spring, we have the so-called March Revolution that overthrew the Tsar, overthrew the essentially one-man government that the Russian people had had for centuries. Tsar Nicholas II is overthrown by a provisional democratic socialist government, democratic government under Alexander Kerensky. This provisional government made the mistake, in retrospect, of continuing the war, a war that was already lost. The Russian people mostly knew this. The struggle for power would then ensue between the official government and the promised uh, elections, and uh, local governments, unofficial governments, committees of workers and f soldiers and sailors saw the Soviets and said, no, we're the real government. So a very, very confusing situation as revolutions always are. In this struggle, uh, the Soviets will essentially take over the army in the capital, Petrograd, the capital, by the way, had been renamed. St. Petersburg, a German name, takes the Russian name Petrograd, later on to be Leningrad. Um, Lenin? Vladimir Le Ilyich Lenin was a, a communist revolutionary who had been banished from Russia by the Tsar. He snuck back uh, from Switzerland into Russia by the Germans. They know he's a troublemaker. He no longer, no, no sooner gets off the train than begins to call for peace and end of the war. Bread for the peasants, and peace for everyone. And he gains a following, especially in the army, an army that overtakes the government, uh, the provisional government is overthrown, and the Bolsheviks claim power. Right? The Bolsheviks were the more extremist communist, uh, although they were a minority group, they took power over the Mensheviks, which were more of a democratic socialist uh, contingent within the Communist Party. This happened in, under the Russian calendar, the old calendar, October, uh, and the Western calendar was November. So the Bolsheviks take power, and Lenin has negotiated a separate peace. Um, the Russians lose probably one-fifth of their Eastern European territory to Germany. Germany will not get to keep that, because ultimately, as you know, they will lose the war itself. Okay? But in the Treaty of brest Russia's out. But the United States had already entered, and that will be our topic next time. Okay, so read the chapter. I'm also going to put up a video from the PBS series uh, called The Killing Fields that will get us into primary video sources, okay? Something we don't really get until the 20th century. We're well into the era of photography, but now we can get into video sources that are real, not recreations. And also, because the series, uh, The People's Century, was filmed a number of years ago, at that time there were still living veterans of the Great War who could present some oral history. So I'll post that as well. We'll see you for the remainder of this chapter next time. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.